Good evening. Welcome to episode two of Blue York One. That's our second news video. Uh, it's currently Tuesday, January 12th, 2016. It's a snowy evening here in upstate New York. And uh, I'm Jonathan Sourshell from nycfcblues.com uh, and Blue City Radio. I'm here to bring you the weekly news update for NYCFC. Uh, we do have a lot of things to discuss this week. Some really exciting things, uh, some uh, things that people are really interested in, and I think this is going to be a good one. So uh, let's get going. The first thing is that NYCFC announced they have a new team president. Uh, it's been rumored for months that Tom Glick was on his way out. Uh, Tom Glick had come to us from City Football Group, had spent his time in England, uh, and the rumor was he was looking to go back. And it has now been made official that he is returning to work for City Football Group in England, and his replacement is going to be John Patrikoff. Now that name probably won't mean much to a lot of people, um, but it actually has an impact in New York City. John Patrikoff uh, formerly worked for over a decade with Tribeca Entertainment. They are the founders of the Tribeca Film Festival, which has become a staple of the uh, film festival circuit in New York City. Um, it has allowed him to have a lot of interaction with local politicians, local celebrities, uh, local business contacts. Uh, he is born and is raised in New York City. Uh, he's a New Yorker, and uh, he is a very active social media presence. Uh, has been uh, very active since his hire on social media, including following and, and communicating with various uh, NYCFC followers, blogs, uh, official news sources. So, um, John Patrikoff, uh, you know, I think the big question for him is, of course, will he help bring along a stadium? Um, you know, it's too early to tell. Uh, he won't officially take over the job until um, in, for a few months now, but uh, there is some hope. You know, uh, one thing of note on his uh, LinkedIn page, he actually noted that he worked uh, on the initial development of the North Atlantic Rail Yards project. Um, that was a project that took a little time to get going, uh, as many sort of big projects do in New York City, uh, but it eventually actually yielded uh, the Barclay Center in Brooklyn. So uh, take that for what it is. So we welcome John Patrikoff. We're excited about uh, what he could be uh, bring for the future of NYCFC. And uh, we wish nothing but the best, and we look forward to seeing him and interacting with him on social media and other functions. Uh, the next bit of news um, actually involves some of our uh, some of our own players and what they're going to be doing for a little bit in January. Uh, there's two bits of news here. There's actually two pieces to this. The first is uh, Kyrie Shelton and Mix Discarud have been called up to the United States men's national team January camp. Uh, the January camp for the United States men's national team is the annual camp used by the coaching staff to call in younger players, American-based players, players who you know currently aren't actually in season uh, as MLS. Uh, so players like uh, you know Michael Bradley is obviously going to be there, Josie Altidore. It's also a chance for some younger players or players who haven't gotten a call up. Ethan Finley, for example, from the Columbus Crew. Tony Chani, Will Trapp from the Columbus Crew. Uh, Mick Ziskrud gets a call-up, which isn't overly surprising. He's been a semi-regular call-up for the United States men's national team over the last couple years, uh, and especially in a January camp when there is, you know, you're, you're really picking from players that aren't currently playing because uh, it is almost a month-long camp. Um, you expected him to be there, but the really exciting news is Kyrie Shelton. Uh, Kyrie Shelton had a struggle of a rookie season with NYCFC, partially through injury, partially through maybe never quite finding his right position. Um, but he had featured uh, for the U.S. men's under-23 team in the fall in two high-profile friendlies against Brazil. And now he's getting a chance to train with and be around the United States men's national team, the uh, the senior team. Uh, so he'll get to train with Josie Altidore, with Michael Bradley, and players of that like. So uh, it's a really exciting opportunity uh, for Kyrie Shelton. Uh, and, and, of course, it's equally as exciting for Mick Discarud. We wish them nothing but the best, and we look forward to potentially seeing them at the end of the month play in, in one of the two friendlies for the United States uh, that they have scheduled in the end of January and early February. Uh, so, you know, good luck, boys. Uh, and I know, uh, according to social media, they're grooming together again at the camp, so 
uh, not overly shocking considering they're roommates in the in New York City uh, during the MLS season. So they get to rekindle that roommate relationship. So uh, that ought to be interesting from a social media standpoint. But good luck. Uh, we're really excited for you and really look forward to seeing what you can do for the United States. Um, in that vein, uh, actually five of our players are currently over in England training with the Manchester City Elite Development Squad. Um, the Manchester City Elite Development Squad is the their youth team, their under-21, their academy squad. It's where Patrick Vieira came from. They uh, currently are hosting five of our players uh, for 10 days worth of training. Uh, it is strictly for training. Uh, first off, the five players are not eligible to play uh, on the uh, and the, for the Manchester City EDS due to age restrictions. And also they're over there just to get in a little bit of fitness work uh, to maybe potentially get used to some of the training methods that Vieira would have. Uh, it's very likely the coaching staff is currently there, worked under Vieira initially. Uh, and we uh, they can potentially get ready for the new 2016 season. Uh, those five players are Tommy McNamara, RJ Allen, Patrick Mullins, Tony Taylor, and Quadru Poku. Uh, so it's exciting opportunity for all five of them. Uh, they were offered this chance. Uh, it's not something that NYCFC can mandate per the collective bargaining agreement with MLS. Uh, they basically they offered it to them as an option, and the players got to choose to take them up on it. And these five chose. We don't know who else was asked or any details. It might have been just these five that were asked. If you notice, they are five of the more the younger players. Uh, Tony Taylor is uh, still is coming off knee surgery as well, so it allows them to get some fitness work in. Uh, but McNamara, Allen, Mullins, and Poku are all on the younger side, but expect to have a, an important role for NYCFC in the 2016 season. So this is a this is a unique and, and special opportunity, and uh, we're excited that they're over there. And I know they took in one of the Manchester City EDS games the other day, uh, and uh, we wish them nothing but the best, and look forward to seeing them back in the states in a in a week's time or so, and look forward to preseason training camp for NYCFC. Um, in terms of NYCFC preseason, we don't have any details beyond the rumored uh, Suncoast Classic tournament that we talked about last week's video. Um, but once we have more details, uh, we will pass it along to you. Uh, nothing's been officially announced by NYCFC, uh, so that is pending. Um, and the actually, we will have some new roster news uh, coming up Thursday, uh, two days from now, from this recording date, is the MLS Super Draft. Uh, NYCFC. It is the first round on Thursday. Uh, NYCFC only has one pick in the entire draft, and it happens to be in the first round. They pick fourth. Uh, there is a lot of speculation about who they might pick. Uh, they were rumored to be trying to get Jack Harrison on a homegrown contract. Uh, that the league did not, as we talked about last week, the league did not allow that. Um, doesn't mean they couldn't try to draft him. Uh, the expectation is Jack Harrison will go potentially in the top two. Uh, he is uh, by a consensus one of the top talents in the draft uh, doesn't mean we couldn't try to trade up and get him um, but if we're picking at four it uh, could be a few options available uh, Brandon Vincent a left back uh, from Stanford he actually has been called into the United States men's national team January camp uh, so he obviously thought very highly of there is a potential that he could drop to four uh, that is a rumor uh, we could potentially look at a center back Jonathan Campbell out of North Carolina uh, that is also something to consider so we will have a little bit more news for you on that uh, in the next video about who we drafted and, and kind of a profile on that player, but that is something to look forward to on Thursday. Uh, you will certainly be able to follow that streaming at uh, MLSsoccer.com, and of course, if you have social media, Twitter, it'll be all over the place, and uh, I will be tweeting about it as well, uh, at NYCFC Blues. So if, if you haven't already, you know, certainly can uh, follow me, and I'll also be tweeting about it during the middle of my workday. I will tweet, ab tweet about that as well when I can um, to give you that update. And then the final bit of news for NYCFC uh, announced last week, uh, late Thursday afternoon, was the 2016 MLS schedule. Uh, always uh, a shockingly controversial moment of the season when an MLS announced the schedule. And it's no different this year, especially when you're talking about NYCFC, who have to share their stadium with the New York Yankees, who, who obviously get their schedule dictated first. Um, this year is especially interesting for uh, MLS because of the two-week break in early June for the Copa America tournament, as discussed previously, and uh, that has created some interesting uh, fixture congestion. Um, as previously mentioned, we open up the season in Chicago, 
on May, March 6th. We then come home from March 13th for our home opener against Toronto. We followed it up with three straight home games. Uh, there's a four-game homestand after the initial game in Chicago. Um, that is one of two four-game homestands throughout the season. The other one actually is uh, from late May into late June. It actually spans that two-week break for the Copa America tournament. Um, beyond those highlights, we have a four-game road trip in July. Um, July is actually our busiest month with six games total. Four of them on the road. Uh, July actually opens up July 3rd. Uh, is our second Hudson River Derby uh, at home against the Red Bulls. The first one's on May 21st, but the second one is on July 4th weekend, July 3rd. Uh, then on the 6th, we travel to New England, followed by Kansas City, uh, Montreal, and um, the Red Bulls. The third and final derby is July 24th at uh, Red Bull Arena, the only one of the three at Red Bull Arena this year. So uh, there is there was also a game at home August 20th against the Los Angeles Galaxy. Uh, so that'll be something to look forward to. We do also welcome teams such as uh, Vancouver and FC Dallas to Yankee Stadium this year. Uh, we do have three home games in September. There are, we finish the season October 23rd at home against the Columbus Crew. Uh, we don't. We only have three home games through the, the combined month of July and August. That is one of the uh, side effects of this strange scheduling this year, um, which means we avoid the New York heat and humidity, but we don't get to have those summer dates, which is disappointing. Um, but we do have an opportunity with the four early home games in a row to potentially get some points early in the season and get off to a really strong start. Uh, we have a total of five weekday home games, uh, which I believe is the same as 2015, so there isn't a drastic difference there. It's still the vast majority of our home games are weekend games, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, so there is, uh, at least that has not skewed too much into the weekday direction, because that is always a, a tough one for a lot of people to make, especially like a Wednesday or a Thursday. The Fridays can be a little bit better, um, but only five total, which I believe is the same as last year, uh, so that, that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, but March 6th, we open up at Chicago. March 13th, we open up at home. So uh, with that, we look forward to the 2016 season, and we finish this week's installment of Blue York One News. I'm Jonathan Sourshell. You can find me on Twitter, uh, at NYCFC Blues. Uh, you can also listen to me at Blue City Radio uh, Weekly Podcast, uh, at Blue City Radio. You can follow us. Uh, and I will be back with you next week with more news, including a review of our draft pick in the 2016 MLS Super Draft. Thank you.